Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Liberate the Nations. My name is Eleonora and today we're going to be talking about the Libra full moon that takes place on Sunday, March 28th with its peak time of 11.47 a.m. and that's for Pacific Standard Time. Since Libra is a Venus ruled sign, this lunation could possibly surround themes of values, beauty, art, and money. For this lunation, there's not many aspects, so we're going to just jump right in. First one being a grand trine between Mars and Gemini, the moon in Libra, and Saturn in Aquarius. This aspect is super supportive of getting shit done. Take the action-oriented Mars, the discipline of Saturn, and the discernment that the Libra moon, which is ruled by Venus, can give you to sift through values and opportunities and put work where work is due. I say use this planetary energy, all of them, the three of them, to really decipher what is worth your time, what is worth your effort, and what is worth your value right now. I also really encourage you to look at your chart as with every moon just so that you know where this is hitting and what houses this is activating, but especially for this trine because you have three points, three major points in your chart that this is going to be hitting. So depending on what houses these three planets are activating, you will kind of know where your focus should be for this aspect and for this full moon in general. The other aspect that we have can be a little bit emotional and perhaps a little bit challenging because we have the Sun, Venus, and Chiron all conjunct in Aries. So we already know Sun is exalted in Aries. Chiron has been in Aries for what seems like years now. Um, and then Venus, which is the ruler of destination, sadly is in detriment in Aries. And it's also combust, which means that it's under the sun's rays, which is blinded by the sun. So it can't really function properly. So with Venus being the ruler of destination and being combust in Aries, it does indicate a little bit of secrecy or setbacks for this lunation. Be aware of yourself. Be aware of who and what surrounds you. Be aware of your intentions as well as other people's intentions during this time. And also my advice is to take a few days before this full moon to really sit down and get clear on what you're intending to either release or manifest right now, just so that you have a clear mind when the day comes. Okay, we're going to pull a card. And as always, this is a energy that we can find grounding and support in during this full moon. Okay, so we got Lilith. Now, I personally don't work with Lilith, so we're going to read from the little booklet to see what message she has for us. So Lilith is known as a shadow. Its symbols are owls, crescent moons, snakes, wands, and cats. When we start to stand up for ourselves, we are often faced with backlash and further punishment. Lilith asks that we don't back down, continue to push forward. In fact, you have the capacity to downright destroy those who continue to oppress you. Call upon this powerful figure of womanhood when you feel like you don't have enough strength left. Sometimes strength is just walking away from the people you are told you are supposed to love or the goals and expectations others have set for us. So the keywords for Lilith are shadows, darkness, power, equality, mystery, wild, pettiness. Hopefully we don't get with the last one, but I feel like that could be pretty accurate, especially having um, Venus combust, ruling this full moon. <clears throat> it does bring a little bit of the darkness and the secrecy into this lunation, but like I said with that, Sun, Venus, Chiron conjunction. R really pay attention to what not only what your intentions and your values are, but the people around you. What are the people around you doing for you? Are they making you feel good? Are they feeding that sun ego, the good ego of like doing what you're meant to do, doing what you want to do? going after your passions or just simply living your life without feeling like you're being put down by the people who are supposed to lift you up, if that makes sense. I really think, I mean, obviously full moons are times of culmination and times of illumination, times of release, but there's also a dark side of the moon. So make sure you go through that dark side 
to know what you need to release into the light and to know what you need to just kind of shed. As always for services, I do recommend energy healings. It can be great for resetting our energetic field and just balancing and clearing all our chakras, getting rid of any negative, stagnant, and unwanted energy that we're carrying with us, whether it's because of us or people around us. For meditations this upcoming week, I do recommend meditation and healing for increasing connection and intuition with Lily Reyes. It's going to be on Thursday, April 1st at 5 p.m. And as always, all of our meditations are $15 and you get a 48-hour replay sent after the meditation. So you can enjoy it on your own time as well if you can't make it live. Right, everybody, that's it for this full moon in Libra. I hope everybody's doing great. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can let us know below. Let us know how you're feeling. If you need anything, you can always DM us, email us, or call us at the shop with any of your spiritual needs, and we got you. I am sending everybody much, much love, many, many blessings, and have a very happy full moon. Energy healing is a form of therapy that helps uh, treat the person on all levels of their life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, which is energetically and physically. I'm energy, this chair is energy, everything around us is energy. Uh, when we you receive an energy healing session, it's a transmission of life force. There are a lot of techniques that we can use to balance the energy field. Uh, regardless of the practitioner, there are certain ways in which each of us can connect to and help the client um, rebalance whatever it is that's going on in their energy field that is creating dis-ease or discomfort in their lives. We work with you both in person and remote. Energy healing is good for everything. So you can use it to manifest something. You can use it to uh, treat a, an ailment, whether it's something physical, mental, emotional. And we cleanse your chakras, balance you, clear out stress, physical issues, worry, fear, trauma, anxiety. Release cords, release things in your life or in your body temple that are keeping you from moving forward. I normally suggest that people get an energy healing whenever they feel that they need it. A healing energy work should be done on a regular basis, like taking a shower. If you're watching this and it crosses your mind, hmm, out of curiosity, get a healing. You're being called to it, 